Thanks for tuning in to a post-qualifying and practice edition here on Prime Sports Network starting lineup report, Straight Talk Wireless 400. Let's get right into it. Just like last week, we are going to start with the practice times first. So I want to make sure that we take it in the same order that was taking place earlier today. Uh, surprisingly, I didn't, I wasn't aware of this because I didn't see the schedule when we did our show earlier this week. You can check it out. The description, in, the link is in the description. We have a full detailed account of the race, the odds, the driver stats, everything you want to know, fantasy-wise, gambling on uh, the race this Sunday. Uh, anyway, uh, I had no idea when the uh, practice and qualifying was going to go off today. I just figured it was going to be about 2.30, regular time, you know, 1 o'clock, 2.30-ish. Instead, they finished like, what, 11, 11.30 this morning? Anyway, good for us. So let's get going. We have a lot to talk about here. Final practice, like there's ever one or two anymore. I think they did what at once. Uh, let's, oh, yeah, I think we had like two, two or three practices once this year. Okay, anyway, uh, let's get right into it because the real winner, there was only really one winner and it was obvious who that was. It's the same driver that you see right here in first place. Let's just get the top 10 here. And that is Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick is the clear winner for today. It's been a while since we've had a driver win both the pole and first practice, as you see here. So yes, I've already given up the secret of who's on the pole. Keep in mind, Tyler Reddick, as we said the other day, is placed here four times. And he did crash once, but when he failed, when he did not fail to finish a race, okay, he has three finishes at Homestead, finishing second, third, and fourth. All right. Matter of fact, he actually led uh, 174 laps at Darlington, the most similar track to Homestead. Early, that was way early this year in the spring. Finished it up with a tenth a few weeks ago at, at, at Darlington. He does have two Xfinity wins in four attempts at Homestead. The crazy thing is he's only led four laps in the Cup Series. I get the feeling that's going to change. Now, remember the other day we were talking, as usual, about you got Larson, 3-1. to one, Then you got the other drivers like Reddick and Bell and Byron, 6-7-1. Six, uh, six and seven to one. Always better off taking the two-for-one deal. And if you went with Reddick, you're sitting pretty because Reddick probably goes off as the favorite. I think Tyler Reddick should go off as the favorite. Now, he may not. Kyle Larson's Kyle Larson. Um, he did have a much better qualifying run than the practice speed because you don't see him up there yet in the top 10. We'll get to him. But still, uh, Reddick is going to be neck and neck with Larson. And the bottom line is, if you didn't get Reddick the other day, you're just not going to get a good number now. And now you can see Reddick and Larson are probably going to be 3 and 4 to 1, something like that. Maybe even both 3 to 1. And that's not a good position to be in handicapping-wise because they're both qual both quality drivers that have the capability of winning the race. All right, now you can see the rest. Now, here's the interesting thing. Bubba Wallace, you see him third? Bubba Wallace is the only driver, who, and we're going to get to the qualifying in a bit. He's the only driver that did not improve his number in the top 10 from practice to qualifying. The only driver. Now, I think that's interesting, but it's not a, it's not a negative because he's only one of four drivers that had top 10 speeds in both sessions. And, and remember, again, if you listen to our show earlier this week, we like Bubba Wallace as one of our favorite long shots. Matter of fact, CJ put him on his top three list. And Bubba's looking good again here. So this is not a surprise. The problem is, again, if you didn't take him earlier this week, the odds are going to drop considerably. You're probably going to get half of what you got at 28 to 1 on Tuesday or Wednesday. And that's because of the fact that, again, you can t just w watch the video and you'll understand why we like Bubba. And then the rest of this field in the top 10, really, you got to look at a few drivers here. Now, Martin Truex, he was one of those that finished in the top 10 in both. And he's starting to, you know, he's, he's picking things up a little bit. He hasn't given up completely on the season. But still, I mean, it's he's had good qualifying and practice sessions before this year and hasn't amounted to anything. Denny Hamlin... Now, that's somebody that I think could quietly, I can't believe I'm saying that, but could quietly be a really good play. And remember, he's got three wins here, but it's also the only time he's had top fives at Homestead the last 15 appearances, which is kind of crazy. 
This is a driver that has experienced six poles at Homestead, yet has only won once from the pole. That was 2020. Two good results at Darlington this year. You were getting 10 to 1. If you could still get 8 to 10 to 1 on Denny Hamlin, I think you're still doing pretty good. I think you're doing pretty good. I don't know if you can get that, but it's possible. All right. Now, take a look at the rest of these practice speeds. Larson a disappointing 14th. Bell a disappointing 16th. Bowman, not so good. Byron has been the biggest disappointment today. You talk about the the, the driver who really took it by uh, the bullhorns. Uh, it was Tyler Reddick. Bowman, excuse me, Byron the opposite. Byron and Blaney, actually. You see Blaney there. Both Byron and Blaney were the most disappointing. Uh, Elliott and Bush, not so good here. Bush, much better. Actually, better in qualifying Elliot much better in qualifying. Let's get to that, why don't we? Here we go. Let's take a look at the 10 drivers who made it to the last stand. And as I said, Tyler Reddick is just the man today. Will this get him out of his little mini slump? Now it's the thing that we were concerned with. See, Bell and Byron, the other two that you could have gone with, that we suggested you go with, was for the two-to-one deal. They're the hot drivers. Reddick hasn't been hot for a while. So maybe is this a sign that Tyler Reddick is going to get out of his little kind of mini slump? He'd be doing it at the perfect time. But look at Christopher Bell. Big jump from 16th to 3rd. Hamlin, big jump from 14th to 2nd. Stenhouse had a big jump from 19th to 5th, but are we going to take Stenhouse seriously? I'm not even going to take Truex too seriously myself. Uh, so why would I take Stenhouse seriously? There's Elliott from 33rd to 7th. Wallace, as I mentioned, dropped from 3 to 8. Still, good runs. Hemrick and Haley, how the hell did they get in there? All right, now the interesting manufacturer note here is that Toyota, which has won 6 of the last 11 races at Homestead, including last year's winner, Christopher Bell, had both... Five of the top eight fastest drivers in qualifying and practice, including the fastest, Reddick. So it's been Toyota, it's very strong in both sessions, and Toyota has been the strongest manufacturer over the last, what, 11 years here. Chevy's been okay. They're clearly the second. They came in winning two out of three at Homestead, and they had six of the top 11 here. As you can see here, there's Alex Bowman moving up. Very strongly from 24th to 11th. Another long shot that we really like. But Chevy did not look good in practice compared to qualifying. Practice, he only had one of the top nine. That was Chastain, who we didn't really talk about. Chastain actually went the complete opposite. Chastain was second fastest in practice, but a very slow 22nd in qualifying. Ford, meanwhile, was just not good. In qualifying, Josh Berry was their fastest driver. He was 12th. He's right here. But in practice, they did have two of the top five. All right. And that was uh, what? Kozlowski. And who else was it? I forget who it was. Kozlowski and. Uh, oh, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at the same one. It was Kozlowski. Let me move this back up. Oh, that's right. Michael McDowell. Okay. Back to qualifying. Let's run this out. Gibbs. Not good. I mean, we didn't even like Gibbs when he's qualifying well. So we're going to pass on Gibbs again. Like I said, Kyle, much better result. Kozlowski goes backwards after a strong uh, practice run. Not so good in qualifying. This is not a good track for Kozlowski. There's Blaney. You know, he makes a, a little bit of a move from 29th to 20th, but still very disappointing. Chastain, big drop. McDowell, big drop. Byron, just not doing it. Logano actually was pretty good in practice, top 10, but did not qualify well, as you can see. Dylan, disappointing for me. I was uh, looking at him as a potential long shot with his history here. AJ, 
coming in with what? A couple of straight, what is he have? Back to back top tens, I believe, here. On this, uh, yeah, fifth and third the last two years. But keep this in mind. He started 25th last year and finished fifth. And for William Byron, anybody out there that's depressed about William Byron, let's remember this. William Byron was 31st. He started 31st three years ago and ended up leading 102 laps, the most he's ever led, winning at Homestead for the first and only time. So keep that in mind. And he's a hot driver. I'm not going to... Matter of fact, I look at this and I'm going, well, if I didn't take Byron and I just I just, I just, wanted to wait for whatever reason, or I just didn't... I don't do it. I, I only take drivers after qualifying and practice. This is maybe good for you. But it all depends on what you're going to get. Because if you don't get a big bonus here, like if Byron's still only like 8 to 1 or 10 to 1, then ah, you got to pass probably. But if you wind up getting a nice break... Minimum 12 to 1, 14 to 1, 15 to 1. Yeah, go after it. Why not? We got proof here. He started 31st and 1. It was his best race at Homestead. Now he's only starting, what, 25th? That's an improvement. All right. So rounding it out here, some other, uh, let's see, some other notes that we can pass along. Remember, the... Last eight years, we've had eight different Homestead NASCAR Cup winning drivers. Eight straight, eight different. All right? So that means that Tyler Reddick is looking that much better because he's never won here. So Reddick is looking awesome right now based on that trend. Don't forget about Blaney. And I think Blaney, same thing with Byron, to tell you the truth. You're going to wind up with better odds with Blaney. It's probably going to be... Who knows? It could be 15, 20 to 1 on Blaney. Go ahead and grab Blaney and Byron. I would. As long as, Ham- like we said before, as long as Hamlin's odds don't drop too much, if he's still 10 to 1, 8 to 1, I still think he's, an, he's, he's a live uh, driver here based on his odds. I'm not going to get crazy about Elliott, even though he was 7th in, in qualifying because he's only led 31 laps in his career. That's 8 races. He's a good average finish. 10.9. But that's kind of what I'm expecting here. Something along the lines of a you know fifth through tenth kind of finish because historically he's he's got a couple of top fives and eight in eight appearances. He never won, so not exactly coming in hot either. But it's not the craziest idea in the world. Remember, we were talking the other day about, and I think this is still I still hold to hold to this. The four drivers, odds wise, the best odds that you have available. And uh, who are they? Uh, I believe that's Blaney. Uh, who is it? Blaney, Elliott, Hamlin. And I forget who the fourth one is. But th- th- those four, I, I take them all. I think it could be Reddick. I think it could be in there. Take, take them all. Because one of those drivers, we, we, we felt real strongly, one of the four drivers that have the, be- the biggest odds, futures, to win the championship one of them, we feel, is going to end up in that final four. And you're getting good odds. Uh, Truex was 16-1 to 1 the other day. And he only has one win here, though. So keep that in mind. In 19 career races, he's led 10-plus laps. This is a good thing. In six of his last seven. So it's been a pretty decent track for Truex. But, I mean, really, we've got so many other options here. I just don't think Truex is the way to go. I think Bowman is still going to be a good number. He was 35 based on the fact that he did not have a top 10 run in either session. Wallace is the one you got to worry about odds-wise. And I wouldn't really be looking at any other long shots past that. So just like we said the other day, Wallace and Bowman are still the top long shots. And now Byron and Blaney look like they could be getting better numbers based on the way that their sessions went today. So I'd still look their way. I I still think Hamlin might be a good bargain. Um, But this is Tyler Reddick's race. Let's let's just be honest. It's Tyler Reddick's race. I don't think there's any question about it. In my mind, if if it's Reddick and Larson, I think they're both going to be the favorites, the co-favorites. I'm going to go with Reddick first. Now, the other day, as far as our top picks, I'm not backing away from... 
you know, going back once again with Bell after what he did last week. And he is the defending champ. I know we haven't had a defending champ win this year. I get it. But who knows? I mean, in this crowd, I mean, with Reddick, I actually, I would, Bell's probably going to be the third choice here. So odds wise, I'm going to guess that, you know, you're still going to get around six to one on Bell. Reddick's coming down to Larson, as I said. So uh, I still think Bell should be an okay kind of number at six to one based on how hot he is. He's the hottest driver out there right now, and he'll be starting third in, on a, in a racetrack where he won last year. So I still think Bell is 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 a really good play here, and um, that'll wrap it up. So we'll be back on uh, Tuesday, hopefully, if not Wednesday. Things have been a little bit busy, you know, with the hurricane, the move, and definitely uh, with the fact that it's football season. Uh, so we haven't been able to get these Tuesday shows in, but hopefully we'll get another Tuesday show in this week and uh, set you up for the last race at Martinsville before the championship for in Phoenix a couple of weeks from now, several weeks from now, actually. So uh, thanks for tuning in. Let us know. Let me know what your questions, comments, anything at all. Uh, if, if we miss talking about something, if there's something at all that you want to add, please do that. You know, get the comment section rolling. Let us know what's on your mind. And uh, don't forget to look in the description. We'll have a link there for the entire the in-depth show that we did earlier this week. That has everything you want to know about the race this week and the drivers and their history and, and, and just all sorts of trends. So check that out. Uh, Fantasy-wise, gambling, all of that. Also, you can look out F1 fans for uh, CJ's report on the F1 race coming up. And uh, look for the links, too, for CJ's F1 and NASCAR fantasy report from rotowire.com. Enjoy the race on Sunday, everybody. We'll see you next week.